Buenos dias, señoritas y señoritos. In our past blogs po, we praise the Marcos government for its deviation or depa its act of departing from the pro-China or China-centered international di diplomacy program or uh, uh, stance taken by the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Tayo naman po, if uh, this government does good, we praise it. And, and if its officials are incompetent, including the president, then we criticize them. Pero if we, something, we see something good, then we, we find no reason to be an obstructionist. Hindi tayo po yung nakikriticize for the sake of criticizing. So we praise. So in this case po, as in our earlier blog, we, we uh, give credit where credit is due. And in this case po, I, I, I express my support and I express my approval to the policy of the Marcos government to extend, to extend its arm for international unity and cooperation with other countries. Pag, magka, malaking pagkakaiba po ito sa Duterte government na ang ginawa nila, in-isolate nila tayo. Inalis nila yung, yung suporta. Uh, Um, uh, umalis tayo or iniwan natin yung uh, popular uh, union ng international community like the, the, like the uh, EU countries na tinawag ni President Duterte ay IOT <laughs> EU, ang mga Bisaya alam yan I IOT countries or EU dahil lang uh, uh, iniimbestigahan siya ng uh, ICC International Criminal Court at saka sa, uh, for his crime against humanity and then uh, uh, insulto rin niya si President uh, Barack Obama and insulto rin niya pati yung Vatican which is not only headed by the Pope but even a, a Vatica, the Vatican is a state is a country is a state the smallest country in the world world well respected but by all other countries so tinuro po tayo kasama na yun ng Amerika na inisulto rin niya si President Barack Obama uh, parang uh, trinato tayo na parang paria country yung country na hindi mo da dapat pwede pakisamahan at nakita natin sa mga foreign uh, foreign meetings foreign assemblies uh, for international meet ng mga heads of states Parang walang heads of state ang gustong kumausap kay President Duterte. Kaya parati nakikita natin na nagsasakit-sakit ulo siya pag, uh, pag uh, uh, dinner or, uh, or uh, social gathering ng mga heads of states. Dahil walang gusto kumausap sa kanya kasi yun nga po, sobra dumikit siya sa China. At, at wala naman po tayo napala sa China. Sa uh, over a hundred projects, trillions worth of projects na prinamis sa atin, by the time umalis si President Duterte, tatlo o apat lang ata ang natuloy at natapos. Yung tatlong train na hiningi niya sa China, kasama na yung legacy project sana niya, a train from Davao to sa lugar po namin na Western Binanao na uh, for the longest time uh, we were just dreaming of that hindi po nangyari kasama na yung train papuntang Clark kasama ng train papuntang Bulacan lahat po pipe dream lahat niloko lang si President Duterte at si President Duterte niloko rin tayo na sinasabi na Okay, gusto nyo awain ko yung China? Bobombahin tayo ng China dito. Kaya ba natin yung nuclear arm nila? O tinan nyo ngayon, bumisita si President Marcos sa Amerika, hindi naman tayo binumbahan. Binisita si Vice President Harris, Kamala Harris dito sa Pilipinas, hindi naman tayo binumbahan. So, I'm happy po na uh, President Marcos is... Uh, 
taking the opposite of what uh, of what President Duterte is doing as uh, unang isa sa mga unang bansa na binisita niya na after uh, assuming the president presidency ay Amerika and then binisita rin po tayo ni ni Vice US Vice President Harris recently po at uh, ipe-play po natin yung speech niya na na uh, ang uh, sinasabi niya talaga yung uh, buot po or uh, pinaka sentro ng uh, problema natin sa China ay yung di lang po yung South China Sea kundi yung pangig panggigipit sa mahirap natin ng mga fishermen po na sa atin po kasi uh, yung sense of uh, yung issue doon sa West Philippine Sea ay abstract issue lang po parang sa atin issue lang po ng paghahabol natin ng, uh, ra, ng uh, mga isla natin sa The Hague. pero hindi po natin nararamdaman yung, yung sakit ng kalamnan yung paggugutom na dinadaan ng mga uh, na mga uh, fishermen po affected diyan sa Palawan po. And uh, dito po kasama sa Amerika na finally and under sa term ni President Bongbong Marcos ay ina-address na po natin. So uh, uh, while I'm taping this po at uh, kadedeliver lang ni Kamara Harris yung yung speech niya pero by the time na i-play ito ng ng uh, ng VAT team wala na po siya dito sa bansa pero Habulin pa rin po natin itong issue kahit late po uh, na kwan lang po tayo, naging busy lang tayo sa case ni Percy Lapit na ta dapat rin naman bigyan natin ng priority yun. Pero bigyan rin natin ito ng priority po because this concerns our country, this concerns our fellow Filipinos na nagsasuffer, lalo ng mga fishermen dyan sa mga areas near the West Philippine Sea. So, ito po, ipe-play na natin po yung speech ni uh, US Vice President Kamala Harris. Thank you, Mr. Undersecretary, for the warm welcome. Uh, it is truly great to be here with all of you, local elected officials, distinguished guests, and community leaders. And it is an honor to be with members of the Philippine Coast Guard. The United States is proud of our long-standing ties with the people of the Philippines. I am here in Palawan to underscore the importance of our partnership in order to create economic opportunities, protect coastal ecosystems, maintain peace and stability, and uphold international rules and norms here in the South China Sea and around the world. To uphold international rules and norms is to support the lives and the livelihoods of people throughout the region. Earlier today, I heard from local officials in Tagburas about the generations of families that have fished these waters. The fisheries of Palawan not only provide food for residents, but serve as the economic lifeblood of this island. I met fishers who go out every day and sustainably catch mackerel and tuna. I spoke with a young woman, her name is Jacqueline, who runs a fish drying business, a business that has been so successful that she has taught other women how to dry rabbit fish so that they can too participate in a vital industry and benefit from extra income. Community leaders here are also working to help residents adapt to warming waters and extreme weather. The stories I have heard make clear this community has come together to sustainably manage natural resources. Despite many challenges, I saw the strength and the resilience of the Palawan community. However, the vitality of communities like this is at risk. Communities like this have seen the consequences and people here know the impacts when foreign vessels enter Philippine waters and illegally deplete the fishing stock, when they harass and intimidate local fishers, when they pollute the ocean and destroy the marine ecosystem. 
illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, also called IUU, is far too common across the world's oceans. It presents a direct threat to coastal ecosystems and economies. To help address these maritime issues, the United States is proud to have a strong partnership with the Philippines, which includes the training recently conducted on this very ship with the Philippine Coast Guard and U.S. service members. And today I am pleased to announce additional areas of cooperation. The United States will provide new funding to Philippine maritime law enforcement agencies to increase their capacity to counter IUU fishing, to enhance monitoring systems, and to upgrade equipment. This will all build upon new initiatives I launched in May at the U.S. ASEAN Special Summit in Washington, D.C. to provide more training, assets, and personnel to build maritime law enforcement capabilities across Southeast Asia. In addition, we have increased efforts to provide countries in the region with a wider and more accurate picture of their territorial waters. In May in Tokyo, alongside the leaders of Australia, Japan, and India, President Joe Biden launched the Indo-Pacific Partnership for Maritime Domain Awareness. This initiative uses space-based platforms to deliver a common operating picture of Indo-Pacific waterways and to promote transparency so that our allies and partners can better protect vulnerable fisheries, respond to humanitarian disasters, and detect and counter illicit activities. I am pleased to report that the Philippines is already receiving this stream of data alongside other partners here in Southeast Asia. And we plan to increase this work in the coming months to include launching new satellites into orbit in December to expand this program. Through USAID, we are also launching a new partnership with local communities here in Palawan to promote sustainable fishing, strengthen food security, and conserve marine ecosystems. So this is how I see it. To protect the economic vitality of these communities, to protect the ecosystems they rely on, and to protect lives and livelihoods, we must uphold international rules and norms. And that is why our work here is so very important. We must stand up for principles such as respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, unimpeded lawful commerce, the peaceful resolution of disputes, and the freedom of navigation and overflight in the South China Sea and throughout the Indo-Pacific. To the Philippine Coast Guard, you are on the front lines of standing up for the international rules-based order. Each and every day, as you patrol these waters, you uphold the rules and norms that are vital to the prosperity of the Filipino people and people around the world. The United States and the broader international community have a profound stake in the future of this region. America's prosperity... Okay, so guys, yun, uh, yun ang buot ng speech niya. Yun, ito kasi guys, ang hindi natin nakikita nung time ni President Duterte. Nadadala tayo sa mga pabiro-biro, nadadala tayo sa mga putang ina ni Presidente, nadadala tayo sa paghalik-halik ng mga bandera, nadadala tayo sa mga, sa mga uh, pahalik-halik sa mga babae, nadadala, nadadala tayo sa pagmura-mura, yung I will kill you if you, if you, do, if you destroy my country, ganun-ganun. Pero uh, if you look at it now, looking back, Pwede natin sabihin na puro 
gimmick lang yun. Puro drama lang yun. Kabaliktaran ang ginagawa niya kasi for the last six years, pinabayaan niya ito mga fishermen. At pinabayaan niya lahat tayo kasi lahat tayo halos maubos na ng, uh, maubusan na ng isda. Imagine nyo during sa time ni President Duterte, ini-import na natin yung galunggong na galing dyan sa West Philippine Sea na ini-import sa atin ng China. So triple kita na sila. Kumikita na sila dyan sa mga Chinese government na nagbabayat sa kanila or nagpapasalamat na hindi nila ginagalaw yung mga Chinese shipping vessel dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Kumikita pa sila sa import ng galunggong. Ginigisa tayo sa sarili nating mantika talaga. So yun talaga, a, a big, a big, pwede natin sabihin wala talagang malasakit yung Duterte government as, as far as the Palawan fishermen as concerned. Wala talaga silang ginawa dyan. Wala talaga silang ginawa para tulungan yung mga, buti pa sa, si Kwan, si uh, President uh, Widodo ng Indonesia, binobomba, dinedinamita yung mga yung mga yung mga fishing vessels ng China na pumapasok sa sa kwan nila sa sa fishing uh, territory pero ta, hindi naman sila ni, uh, binomba ng nuclear bomb ng China hindi naman sila inaway hindi naman sila ininvade kasi may balls yung presidente nila at hindi corrupt dito hindi kaya alam nyo yung mga diktador ng na gobyerno sa buong sa buong mundo gustong-gusto nila yung China kasi yung China, mas gusto nila ibi, kaysa bigyan ng aid ang, ang mga kabansa na partner nila, bi, bina, binibigyan nila commission, binibigyan nila ng bribe. Yung mga president, vice president, uh, prime minister, hindi natin sinasabi nangyayari ito dito kay President Duterte. Pero sinasabi natin nangyayari ito sa ibang bansa kaya na bumaksak na sila sa debt, sa Chinese debt trap. So, ang ang bu ang kwan lang talaga dito, yung tulad ng sinasabi ko, yung yung issue natin dah sa Dahig, hindi natin ra nararamdaman 'yan. Pero ang ang directly nararamdaman at apektado diyan, yung livelihood ng mga fishermen, ng mga thousands and thousands of fishermen diyan sa Palawan. Ito yung economic lifeblood nila na nasisira ngayon. At uh, uh, parati sila para inu na inuubos ng mga Chinese vessels yung mga yung mga supply nila hinaharas binabangga yung mga yung mga fishers uh, uh, fishermen's vessel nila or uh, uh, fishing ships nila sinisira yung uh, eco uh, uh, sea uh, ecosystem na dahil yung pagtatayo nila ng mga isla diyan na nasisira yung mga corals diyan na uh, para lang maitayo yung mga yung mga yung ginagawa nilang parang po, uh, fortress na diyan military military fortress so apektado tayo lahat apektado lahat, tayo lahat at hindi ito yung hi, hindi pinakita sa atin ni President Duterte buti nga nung eleksyon only uh, kung naalala natin among hindi man dahil tinulungan ko siya or kaibigan ko siya pero uh, Mayor Isko, in fairness, uh, batet for uh, yun, sasabi niya, sinabi niya kung manalo siya, bobombahin rin niya yung mga fishing vessels na yan. So, dapat uh, yan ang attitude na kailangan natin. At uh, maganda ito, hindi man binobomba ni Marcos yung mga fishing vessels ng China. Pero, this is good. Pinapakita niya na uh, open siya sa lahat. Hindi naman na in, i, itinatabuyan niya yung China. Hindi rin niya tinatabuyan yung, yung America at saka European Union. Si Blackcaster, hindi naman ako pro-American, hindi naman ako pro-China, hindi naman ako pro-European, pro-Pilipino lang ako. At doon lang ako sa lesser evil. And if you compare China and America, much lesser evil yung America. So, and we are fighting the same fight against China. So, in this, in this regard po, kaya prinay ko ito, I just want to praise the Marcos government. Hindi po si Blackcaster, uh, you may hate me for this vlog, pero si Blackcaster po, hindi po tayo obstructionist. Yung obstructionist po, yung, yung uh, kinikriticize lang nila na ang gobyerno for the sake of criticizing. Hindi po tayo ganyan. Fair is fair. So, in this regard po, I support so far, so far, 
kung ituloy nila ito at wag sila ulit magsipsip sa China. So, this is something good. I I find reason to praise the Marcos government. So, tututukan po natin itong issue na ito. And uh, please, uh, if you agree with my blog, with my position, and with my views, share na lang itong blog to your friends and relatives and tell them to subscribe to the Blog Caster Armandin YouTube channel. Dahil dito sa channel, dito sa channel ni Vat po, fair lang tayo sa lahat. Our loyalty is only to the Filipino people and to the interest of the Filipino people. So thank you very much for watching and see you in my next vlog.